By now, everyone's seen the news uh, or seen the clips float around on social media that we're going to see Jordan Grace challenging Roxanne Perez on the upcoming NXT Battleground pay-per-view. And I got to tell you, for me personally, things escalated quite quickly because it wasn't just a few hours before that where I have this uh, this janitor at my work who... um. He, he, you know, he watches wrestling. He comes in with these, uh, you know, Jimmy Snuka shirts and Seth Rollins and stuff. So I'll, I'll BS with a dude about wrestling. Um, with, with all due respect, he, he's a special needs guy. Um, so sometimes we'll, we'll chat about wrestling and sometimes he'll say something to me that doesn't sound quite accurate, but I, you know, I'll, I'll kind of go along with it, whatever. Um, but he had told me, you know, NXT is coming to Las Vegas. I said, Oh, really? You know? Kind of like, kind of like appease them because I didn't see anything about that on social media at all. I don't know when, when that was announced. I mean, it's just not a company I really follow. So it wasn't, but a few hours later that all of a sudden this surfaces on social media. I'm like, holy shit, you know, like, and that's what I'm saying. It just uh, happened for me very quickly. So people have ask, been asking if I plan on going to this. Uh, I did look at the tickets and. Um, it, it's a small arena, but the 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 seats were like two fifty a piece, and it's like if I'm buying for myself, my two kids, maybe my wife goes, you throw in taxes. I'm I'm like, I'm not really paying a thousand dollars for a company I don't really watch, don't really know the wrestlers that well. Um, so I I'm gonna sit this one out. I I, I watch a little NXT here and there. And when I say here and there, I mean every few months. If I'm not really doing anything, I was like, oh, I'll catch an episode of this. It's not a product I hate, but it's a little cheesy for my taste. I've said it's kind of like a male. Well, no, there's women in it as well, but it, it's a it's like a version of Glow. And um, Ethan Page actually fits in great there with his inauthentic promo style. Uh, but it, but it's not something I hate. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot about the camera angles and the way they shoot it, the way they present it, where I think is kind of cool. I've said at one point, this is what I envisioned for TNA once upon a time. Like they don't have the money for that kind of production quality. But when I said it's what I envisioned for TNA, I was saying that because I said, you know, I would like TNA to present wrestling different on TV than you see somewhere else you know and nxt is something that is presented very differently so it was kind of a good example of what i was looking for anyway this announcement was made you know uh nxt which i believe is a live program nx uh the rock's daughter ava rain i believe her name is made the announcement and jordan Grace grace comes out and much to the delight of the audience you hear the tna chants and everything which was really awesome. And, you know, she came down, she said a few words, and, you know, it's official like a ref with a whistle. I'm glad that Roxanne Perez didn't rebut because she's very bad on the mic. Um, and I've had people tell me, well, it's, it's a developmental show. I'm, look, she did Ring of Honor for a while, which I know is not like super promo heavy. When she she had the match with Deanna Perrazzo on Impact, and when she spoke on there, I was like, oh, my God, she's horrible. And I've seen, whether I watched NXT or I've seen clips on social media, because even with the companies I don't watch, you know, sometimes I'll let them tickle my fancy. I come across on Facebook, you know, some some clips, and I'll watch them. And I'm just like, man, she cannot talk. So... Uh, it's just not authentic, I guess is what I'm saying. But that's just kind of the overall an NXT promo style. So I'm glad she didn't speak here. I'm glad that came, that uh, you know her her facial reactions were kind of fake. But other than that, this was a really really nice little segment. Jordan just came in. She looked great. She looked natural. Um, just looked like a dominant force. And Jordan is a a star in her own right. She truly is. I mean, she was ne she wasn't too big, you know, excuse me, the Royal Rumble was not too big for her. The moment was not too big for her, and this wasn't either. And I it's not the world's biggest crowd that watches NXT, but 
you know, it, it's a large audience. It's a really well produced show. She she came off so natural. Um, she's she's got a lot of star qualities about her, and I'm excited for this. I fully plan on watching this uh, this battleground show when it comes out. Um, I mean, it, it's a really big it's a really big for day for TNA. Um, I'm gonna get into you know this this response of mine this uh, opinion piece came out a little late because i wanted to ask i wanted to do my due diligence a little bit i wanted to ask around and ask some questions in regards to this uh because i think my audience deserves that and i've i've tried to do um a better job about looking into things and getting confirmation on things before um i i speak my opinions on them but before I get into that, I want to talk about a talent exchange. Um, before before I get into my actual conversations, my opinion on a ta- talent exchange. I am seeing people on Twitter fantasy book every women's wrestler on the main roster from Charlotte Flair to you know people at the bottom. I'm seeing people fantasy book AJ Styles. Uh, Drew McIntyre and I, I understand some comments were made on social media by these guys and they're teasing it. Remember, this happened once upon a time with AEW as well. You know, the and the partnership was announced and FTR is on there like we want to take on the North and the, the fans are fantasy booking. Uh, you know, this guy versus this guy, this girl versus this girl. You know, we're going to get Abaddon versus Sue Young and versus Rosemary. I mean, it was just all over the place, the shit people were coming up with. This is real similar. Um, to me, Natty Neidhart is a best-case scenario, but she's a significantly bigger star than Jordan Grace. All things relative, no, she's not. Jordan means a lot more to TNA than Natty means to WWE at this point. This point, as far, again, if you're just, if all things are relative and you're talking about position in the company, um, the way that they're booked, the way they're handled, the way pr- they're presented. So all things relative, Jordan Grace is a bigger star. All things are not relative, however. Nat- Natty's a significantly bigger star than her. So that's why I'm saying um, that's a, a best-case scenario as far as a challenge talent exchange. That's my opinion. What I envision, and this is my... I'm fantasy booking here as well, but I'm... I'm the reason I'm even putting it this out there. I'm not trying to start a rumor. I'm just trying to give an idea of kind of what I envision and what I would kind of like to see, to be honest, uh, because this is, this is the start of something. We're not, we're not busting our nut immediately and hoping that AJ style shows up a slam anniversary because Jordan grace is doing NXT. That's just, it isn't realistic to think like that. Um, Really kind of what I envision is something, and, and I think I'm being realistic here, and I just want to get people thinking realistically. If, if if we get something amazing, incredible, some huge star, awesome. But I want people to think realistically. I kind of envision if they bring back Ultimate X, the female, the uh, Knockouts Ultimate X for Slammiversary, which I think they did it last year. Um. I could see them adding a participant to that. Uh, I could see a, like a Solda Ruka. Is that, her, is that her name? Their names are horrible over there. Potatum this and Paxley this. Uh, the names are horrible. I believe I believe that's her name. Um, if, I, if, I, if I butcher that, I apologize. I just don't watch the product closely enough. But as I said, I, I do watch some clips and I'll do watch some matches here and there that they show. Um, but that's an individual that has the level of, of, of athleticism that would benefit in a, in a, in a, in a knockouts ring and doing a match like that. I see them. My point is I see them adding an auxiliary ple- a piece, like a, they'll, they'll add someone to highlight a match to make a match a little more interesting. Um, kind of like hard to kill. Was it hard to kill when they added, Zaya Brookside. I think that was the ultimate X, come to think of it. You know, they they highlighted 
a little bit. They add Zaya Brookside as an outsider. I see more something like that happening. I think that is a little more realistic. If there's a multi-woman match, I, I, I can see something like that. Now, I don't think anyone expects Jordan Grace to beat Roxanne Perez. Is she better than her? Yes. Is she going to beat her? Probably not. Um, so it's very, very possible that WWE is going to give her a beatable opponent for maybe, I would say Slammiversary, but it just really seems like they're trying to get this Ash by Elegance thing to happen by Slammiversary. So are they going to derail that? I don't really know. But that's that's kind of what I think. I, I just I just want to prepare people. Again, I'm not trying to uh, create rumors. I just I think we have to not think so big. I mean, I, I saw you know someone on Facebook saying any anything less than Natty Nightheart would be a, uh, a disappointment. Well, it's probably gonna be. <laughs> it's not gonna be Bobby Lashley coming over. Um, because they send Jordan Grace to NXT. I think I think people just have to be realistic about that. Um, so let's see. I did ask a few questions here um, with a with a contact at the company, and I just you know again, I I just want to do a better job on the channel before I start spouting off on opinions and and everything. With if there's things that I can um, confirm or deny or whatever, I'm going to do my best to do that. I owe that to my subscriber base. So um, regarding Jordan Grace's contract, the fans have speculated, and I say speculated because I don't remember the, the official date ever coming out, but the, the date the fans have been floating around social media is 2026 for her contract. And, and I, I think that is accurate, actually, um, based on my convo. I believe that's accurate. If not, it's it's pretty close. But I... I was told the contract is not up anytime soon. And um, with this, I had asked, is there any internal concern about Jordan Grace uh, wanting out of her contract early or WWE trying to buy her out at this point? And I was told there's absolutely no, no concern about um, – that being a thing that uh, you know what she does when the contract is up is on her that there's there's no plans to to tie her down like she's not in jail they're not gonna try to force her to stay if she's interested in in chasing that but it doesn't appear that there's any concern internally about letting her do these dates to where she's just gonna say okay well I, I want out of my contract and I want to go there so I think that um, we'll hopefully talk a few people off the ledge because I know I'm someone here on the channel where I, I've been saying many times, I was like, she's probably out of here. Um, so I, I hope that does. Ha Excuse me. I meant to say, I hope that does clarify things a little bit to where, uh, you know, people aren't too concerned about that. As far as the actual talent exchange goes, you know, I, I put it in the terminology like this. Like we were seeing, were you seeing this terminology online? I said, is this door going to open both ways? And, um, you know, that's that's the big thing that everybody wants to know. You know, and I was told that right now there's nothing in the works. There's nothing on paper. Uh, that the expectation is there is going to be some sort of challenge exchange, exchange. But it doesn't appear that it's something that's been agreed on right now it this was more about uh tna trying to enhance the nxt product and building their own talent uh, their own brand recognition so this is clearly something more benef beneficial for tna it gives some talent to the nxt product it freshens things up it's it's an it's an example of how the quote-unquote forbidden door actually should work like with tony khan i mean it, the for, the door has been open so many freaking times that it means nothing at this point you know doing it like this so intermittently is is like it makes uh you know it's just a bigger deal than 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 what anything AEW is doing regarding bringing in talent from other places so it enhances the nxt product but it's 
you know, th- this is this is about brand recognition uh, for TNA as well. And Jordan Grace is a a really really person, really good person for that. There is going to be more going forward, like, and I don't know what that means. It might mean a more Jordan. It might mean someone else. I don't know. I know that the plan is to continue working together, but as far as anything in stone, like, uh, that, hey, there's already a talent exchange in place. That is not the case. Um. Also. With that being said, this does appear to have been be a backup plan. Um, this was the contingency plan. This was not the first. They had a different arrangement worked out that that looks like it was going to be um, a, a talent exchange, an actual talent exchange, but that didn't end up working out. It fell through. So this was the this was the backup plan. So I don't know what the other plan was. I don't know who it involved it involved i don't know if it involved jordan i don't know if it involved one of the guys one of the champions um on on either brand i have no idea with that because that's that's deeper than i can i can dig into but there was there was a different plan initially that um that would have seen a quicker challenge exchange but because that fell through this is the backup and they don't really know where they're going from here Sean Ross Sapp put out a blurb saying that Jordan Grace is getting paid six figures for three matches. Um, I asked if there was any validity to that, and it wasn't something that, unfortunately, I was able to confirm or deny, but what I was told is that Jordan is cool with Sean Ross Sapp. So kind of like the Deanna stuff and Steve Macklin where things were getting leaked through Sean Ross Sapp, because they're close with him, Jordan's close with him too. So initially, when I saw this announcement, I said, "There's no way that this is true." If, if we're just, I was like, "If we're being logical, if we're being reasonable, that doesn't make any sense." You know, to, for that kind of payday, when Jordan likely did not have her arm, you know, her arm twisted to do this NXT program. So I was like, you know what? I I can't imagine that being true. Um, but uh, but it looks like she's pretty good, pretty pretty in with Sean Ross Sapp. So I'm actually going to lean towards this being true. Now, one or two things, one of two things are happening here: that it is either 100% true, or she's uh, posturing for her next deal. W- whether it's with TNA and it's she's trying to uh, create an internal bidding war, I don't really know. I still stand by the fact that when her contract is up, I don't see her staying at that point. It would have been like seven, eight years in the company. She's wrestled everybody. I mean, what the fuck is she going to do, right? Uh, but it was it was also communicated to me that they have their, you know, there are wrestlers on the roster that they feel will always stay there. And they're also, you know, they also understand that it's a stepping stone company for others, you know, which I think that's a good place to be in. Uh, to just to be realistic that hey some people are going to come here and they're going to spring want to springboard to the next level but that they do not book based on who they think is coming and who th- who they think is going and um they d- they don't they don't take it too seriously uh they they don't you know they just book what they think is going to be good now me personally i think you have to prepare for her leaving i've said this many times you know I think you have to to book the other knockouts around her with the expectation that she's going to leave one day. I think that's a the best way to go around about business personally. But um, it doesn't seem like they overthink it in that sense. Abyss was an example given to me of someone who, you know, basically said they're not going anywhere, and then they they went somewhere. So anything can happen. Anyone can leave. Anyone can stay. You know, it's all on it. And the last thing I'm going to say is that this was not a Scott Demore. Uh, th- this was not something that was in place when Scott Demore was there. So that's been something that I've seen float around as well, where it just just a conversation. You know, is this something that Scott Demore established before he left? Is this, you know, it, it is the new regime. So there is a working relationship there. This is not a this is some some kind of pre-existing relationship. Uh, this this is the new regime making moves. So that's that's great to hear. Hopefully we're going to see more of this sooner than later.
But um, I just I don't want people to get their hopes up because with AEW, we're like, hey, we're going to get this guy and this guy. And we got, you know, we got private party um, and they were protected when they were on impact. It just it just the best thing is to not get your hopes up and just be surprised if they give you something good, if they give you something awesome. Um, if, if a big name shows up, you know, just just embrace it when it happens. But to have the the mindset that I read on Facebook today where someone said anything less than Natty Nighthart is a disappointment. It's it's really in your best interest not to think like that. 